Hi, greetings to all of you. Today we are going to talk about certain basic concepts of psychophysics. Psychophysics. As we are all aware, it has been regarded as the science that investigates the quantitative relationship between physical events and corresponding psychological events. That is, the quantitative relationship between the stimuli and the response. So in other terms or in broader terms, when we talk about psychology, then we can say that much of psychology is psychophysics. Because for understanding behavior, we always need to understand and have knowledge of how a stimuli generates a response or how the response depends upon the stimuli. Fekner has been known as the father of psychophysics. Classical psychophysics of Fekner, G. E. Muller and Unst was concerned primarily with the determination of sensory threshold or which in other words is also known as Lyman. The original interest of Fekner was in philosophical question of the relationship between body and mind, between physical and psychical, psychical aspects of the world. Therefore, in any psychophysical investigation, the assumption is there of two quantitative variables. There is always a physical continuum. Parallel to it, there is a psychological continuum. As we can see in this figure, the response continuum is known as the R and the stimulus continuum is known as S and both are parallel to each other. Now before we move further, it is important to understand what does this word continuum mean. By continuum we mean a closely graded series. That is, one step merging imperceptibly into the next. There is no gap. The whole forming a straight line signifying changes in a single direction. Each physical continuum is measurable in physical units and represents a single change in some physical property. For example, the frequency of the sound wave, the amplitude of a sound wave, the weight in grams of any solid in grams of any solid, the length of a line, the energy level of the light stimulus, all these things, they are placed on a physical continuum and can be measured in physical units. In correspondence to these, there are certain well-recognized aspects of sensory experience also, like the pitch, loudness, sound, the pressure, the perceived visual length by the individual and the brightness of light. All these are the sensory experiences experienced by the individual. These may be through all the sensory organs of the individual body. As we have seen in the figure that was shown above in slide 4, the lower horizontal line represents a stimulus continuum, which I had mentioned by the name of S. A physical continuum, usually it extends from a lower limit of absolute zero. That is, none of the property at all, absence of that property, to some very large quantity, which is well beyond any quantity with which the organism can cope with. For instance, the sound may exceed the limit to which your ears can take it. 
Now, the psychological continuum corresponding to the physical continuum 1 is shown by the upper horizontal line in the figure, which I had mentioned with the name of R and it is labeled as R. These two continua are denoted by the letters S and R respectively. As we can see in this diagram, the R continuum is shorter than the physical S continuum on both the ends. Now what, why does this happen? This is because there are stimuli of very low quantity to arouse any response on the S continuum and there are also stimuli on the S continuum which are of too great quantity and which our receptors cannot take or which is not receivable by the receptors. Now, when we talk about these two psychophysical continuums, we need to know one thing more. That there is no one stimulus below which, at the lower end, no response ever occurs and above which a response always occurs. The transition, it is the transition from the tone to no tone or vice versa, from no tone to tone. It, this transition is not sudden one, but a very, very gradual one. In other words, we can also say that at one moment a stimulus of a given quantity in the neighborhood of the lamin gives a sensation and at, at the other moment it does not. So, what we need to know is that this transition is a very gradual transition and this is what Woodworth calls as a transition zone and which, which is depicted in the figure in the form of dotted line uh, which extends on the R continuum on both the ends. One thing more that we need to know in this concern is that of threshold and the types of threshold. Threshold is an observer is that a stimulus intensity which is detected 50% of the time in detection experiment or as the difference between two stimuli which is detected 50% or 75% of the time in discrimination experiments depending upon the number of response categories. The first type of threshold that we can talk about is absolute threshold. Absolute threshold is denoted by SO for the lower end of the R scale and it is called the stimulus Lyman or absolute threshold. It is defined as that low stimulus quantity that arouses a response 50% of the time. Now putting it more simply, I would say that it is defined as the lowest intensity of the stimulus which the observer is able to detect 50% of the time. Now I will give you an example. A very classic example of absolute threshold is that, for instance, we release uh, some fragrance into a closed room. In this scenario, absolute threshold is that least amount of fragrance which is necessary for the subject to detect that there is an odor. Similarly, this we were talking about the sense of the smell. Now, when we uh, talk about in terms of uh, the hearing sense, so we can take it in uh, terms of sound threshold. Uh, for instance, there is a person in the room who has started tuning the radio. Here, absolute threshold will be that intensity of the sound at which you are able to know that yes, something is happening in the room in terms of radio and somebody is trying to tune it. Similarly, if we talk in terms of the visionary sense, then for, for instance there is a dark room and uh, you start uh, lighting candle or something or it may be defined as that light, amount of light which is necessary to see something in the dark room. This 
amount of light which makes you to see something the least amount of light which makes you to see something in the dark room is no it will be the absolute threshold for vision after this we come on to difference threshold it is that stimulus difference that is noticed 50% of the time by the observer the level at which an increase in detected stimulus can be perceived so if we talk in very very simple terms then we can say that it is the level of the stimulus needed for a person to recognize that a change has occurred it is also known as just noticeable difference or difference line i'll give you an example for instance if you have added 1 teaspoon of sugar into a cup of water now you add little more to it and little more to it till you are able to say that yes now the sweetness is different from the initial one so this amount of sugar that you had added in order to for the observer to detect a difference is known as the difference threshold or if you place some amount of weight on the palms of an individual and you keep on adding some more weight and the individual is not able to detect the difference for instance if you add 1 gram more the individual is not able to tell the difference 2 grams more the individual is not able to tell the difference now you add uh, 5 grams the individual is able to tell the difference so this difference is known as the differential threshold which is the stimulus difference that is noted 50% of the time by the observer in addition to this we also have the terminal threshold this is the upper limit of the response scale and it is denoted by st it is defined as that high stimulus quantity that beyond uh, or that arouses a response 50% of the time and beyond which no response is possible and your receptors say now we cannot take it anymore that point is known as the terminal threshold now we have talked about the threshold and its size depending upon this we have uh, we classify different methodologies in psychophysics broadly we have tried to categorize it into classical psychophysical methods and modern psychometric methods the classical psychophysical methods they help you to measure intensity of sensation at a physical scale and the modern psychometric methods they help to measure the mental levels which we have at psychological scale the classical psychophysical methods which will be taking up in detail in the coming up slides uh, in the coming up ppts are the method of average error the method of limit and the method of constant stimulus and the modern psychometric metric methods that we'll be taking up are the pair comparison method the rank order method and the rating so i hope that uh, we have tried to make certain basic concepts of psychophysics clear and we'll continue further with the methodology part of psychophysics thank you thank you